Hello and welcome to another tier list video. Today we are taking a look at Harry Potter characters. Now, because I don't want this video to be two hours long, I slimmed down the list to the characters that I found to be most interesting or most memorable from the movies for me. Admittedly, I have not read the books, and I know some of you are going to stop watching this video right now because I haven't, but I've seen each of the movies a handful of times, some of them several times, so I feel like I can give a decent uh, ranking of the characters based on the movies, but just keep in mind that I haven't read the books, so I'm not going to have the, uh, the understanding of some of the characters that some of you might have over me. But starting us off, we have Harry Potter. Um, now honestly, I mean, he's, he's the main character. The, the movies are literally called, the books are literally called Harry Potter and you know he's, he's the main character and honestly there's some movies and books where I don't actually like the main character that much but I still like the movie and Harry Potter I do think Harry Potter is a really good main character um, it's really cool to see his development and growth throughout the movies and overall just honestly it, it's really hard to put him anywhere but the S tier so Harry gonna find himself up in the S tier up next we have Ron Weasley um, pretty much Harry's best friend throughout the movies and honestly, going off the movies, I really like Ron in the early movies. I would say the first four, maybe even first five movies. Um, I think Ron is a great character. really adds a lot of value to the movies. But in the last couple movies, especially uh, part one of Deathly Hallows, uh, he's just so annoying and so whiny. I really feel like the writing for Ron kind of went downhill in the later movies. He just became a lot less likable and a lot less enjoyable for me. So if we're just looking at the early movies, I would say Ron is an S tier, great character. But towards the end, he honestly finds himself down in a, a C or maybe even a D tier for me. Uh, so because, you know, he's so annoying for me, at least in the later movies, he's going to find himself down in the B tier. Up next we have Hermione. Now I would say Hermione is just a pretty solid character all throughout the movies. Um, clearly just really intelligent, you know, loyal, good friend to Harry Potter. And I would say pretty much every single movie she adds a good amount of value. There's nothing really that sticks out too much um, in one of the specific movies for me about Hermione. But I just think she's a solid character and adds a decent amount of value in pretty much every single movie she's in. So she's going to find herself in a very solid A tier. Up next we have Fred and George Weasley and I'm going to be ranking them together because to be completely honest I cannot tell any of them apart. I'm sure there's some of you who can uh, but me I, I cannot tell them apart in any of the movies but that being said I think they are fantastic characters. I love both uh, Fred and George and they're just so funny. Every single movie that they're in they're always doing something goofy whether it's you know selling a you know off-brand jelly beans or something or starting their own shops or just they're just always up to mischief and trouble uh fred and george just such likable characters really every single scene that they're in the scene is made better by fred and george so definitely gonna find themselves up in the s tier for me up next we have dudley um honestly dudley he's a rather unlikable character but i really can't blame him too much for kind of how he turned out and how he's you know acts to towards Harry Potter and other people because his parents are just like some of the worst parents you can ever see in any movie and honestly when you know Dudley's as young as he is especially in the early movies you really gotta blame the parenting style of uh, Vernon and Petunia uh, they're clearly just doing a terrible job and I think that's the main reason that Dudley is so flawed but even then I still feel bad for him because he's always you know kind of on the receiving end of some Harry Potter's mischief especially the thing with the Dementors you know, feel pretty bad for for, uh, for Dudley with that one. So, I will say, I don't think he adds too much value to the movies, but I think he is an interesting side character, and I think the hate that gets aimed towards him is really kind of unwarranted sometimes. I think he's more so flawed due to his parents, so Dudley, I, I kind of, I'm gonna, gonna give him a sympathy C tier, honestly. You know, a lot of people would say maybe D or F tier, but I feel like a lot of the, uh, flawed character characteristics of Dudley are kind of due to his parents and how they raised him. So next we're getting into his parents. We have Petunia and we have Vernon. And honestly, uh, these are some of the worst characters in the show, period. Um, Vernon, I will say, at least is like kind of funny. Like he's a bad character, but it's it's he's so bad that like he's funny and like kind of the, the things he does are, are pretty goofy and pretty funny. So Vernon, honestly, he's going to find himself in a C tier as well because he's pretty funny, even though he's super dislikable. But Petunia, 
I mean, she's just there. I feel like she adds absolutely no value to really any of the movies or the scenes that she's in. So Petunia, gonna find yourself down in a very, very low F tier. Up next, we have Ginny Weasley. Um, of course, uh, spoiler alert if you haven't seen Harry Potter by now. Um, you know, that's I think that's on you. But uh, Ginny and Harry Potter do get together in the end. And honestly, you know, I had this part spoiled for me long before I actually reached the ends of the movies. So I... I kind of knew it was coming but in the early movies I was like really Ginny and Harry they're gonna get together I feel like in the early movies Ginny really wasn't that interesting of a character um, didn't really add much value at all but as the movies went on and as she grew and matured I thought she actually became a much more interesting character and by the end you know I was pretty happy that she ended up with Harry Potter I think they make a pretty strong duo and so with Ginny in the early movies she would probably be a C tier kind of an inconsequential character but in the later movies I think she's really solid and works her way up to an A tier, so that'll kind of average out for me in the B tier. Up next, we have Arthur Weasley, of course, uh, the Weasley family's uh, father figure. And I would say he's a really solid character. Pretty much any movie that he's in or scene that he's in, he's at least interesting, and he's usually there for a reason. Um, I would say just a pretty solid character, adds a pretty good amount of value in all the movies he's in. So Arthur going to find himself up in the A tier. Up next we have Molly Weasley. Um, she's kind of she's kind of funny. She's like the stereotypical mother of a crazy family that you see in movies, and I think she plays the role pretty well. I think she's funny, um, an enjoyable character. I wouldn't say an inconsequential character, but she definitely doesn't play a very pivotal role in many of the movies. She's just kind of a you know a solid side character, and for that reason, she'll find herself up in the B tier. Up next, we have Cedric Diggory. Now, honestly, one of my favorite characters in the Harry Potter universe. I think Cedric is great. I think he's such an interesting and cool character. I was so sad that he died. And honestly, if there was one character in the movie that I wish we would have gotten to see more of, it would be Cedric Diggory. Um, so sad they killed off my boy, but he's still going to find himself up in the S tier. Up next, we have uh, Neville Longbottom. You know, the picture is kind of cutting off the top of his head there, and that's because he's just so tall in the later movies. I mean, Neville, you know, if you were to show me a picture of Neville in the first movie and Neville in the last movie, I would have never expected that that was the same character. I mean, this guy, not only the, you know, character growth and development he went through, but also the physical growth and development that Neville went through was just, like, I would say the most of any character in the movie. And, you know, he's kind of this annoying, you know, chubby, uh, you know, ratty little kid in the first and second movie. And then by the end of the movie, he's like one of the bravest, boldest characters in the entire movie. So I will say Neville Longbottom early on, he'd probably be like a C or a D tier. But by the end of the movie, he's one of my favorite characters in the in the final movies. So Neville, honestly, it's even though he wasn't great at the beginning, he's so good at the end that he's going to find himself up in the S tier. Up next, we have Seamus. Now, honestly, he's really not that important of a character, so you're probably wondering why did I even include him in this list. It's because I just so badly wanted to put him in the F tier, and that's where he'll go. Seamus, he's just like the most annoying character in in Harry Potter, I would say. It's like every single time he's opening his mouth, it's like, Seamus, what are, you, what are you talking about? What are you trying to say right now? I feel like he's in so many scenes. I mean, not compared to any main character, but as a, a side character, he's really in a lot of scenes and he has a lot of lines where he talks a lot. And I just feel like he never adds any value to any scene that he is in. Um, honestly, there's just a, really nothing good I can say about Seamus. Sorry to you Seamus fans out there, but he's going to be down in the F tier for me. Up next we have Lavender. Um, this is another character who I will say is really not that important as she mainly is only important in one movie I would say and that's where she's dating Ron. Um, but I felt like, you know, similar to Seamus, I needed to include her because she is just so annoying and of course she is purposely, you know, the annoying, you know, oppressive girlfriend that Ron is dating that he doesn't really know what he's getting himself into when he first starts dating her. Um, and I think the actress who plays her does a really fantastic job, but man, as a character, super, super unlikable, super annoying. Uh, Lavender, gonna find herself down in the D tier. Up next, we have Draco Malfoy. Now, as far as villains go in movies, I think that Draco is a really, really interesting character because you look at him as the bad guy and the evil guy, well, one of them, of course. 
Uh, but as the movies go on, you kind of begin to sympathize for him in the position that he's been put in, you know, by his family. Just having the name Malfoy and, you know, believing that he is, you know, the next chosen one of Slytherin. Um, he feels all of this pressure to, you know, step into. And I think that his character and his character development are both really, really interesting. And even the name Draco, I think, is pretty cool. Um, but just as a character, I feel like he really adds a lot of just interesting scenes into the movie. And his character is just so deep throughout the movies. You keep on learning more and more about him. And I just think he's a solid character, adds a lot of value to the movies. So, gonna find himself up in the S tier. Up next, we have Luna Lovegood. Um, honestly, just a pretty likable character. She's not a super inconsequential character, I would say. Um, but when she does show up, I feel like she's always a welcomed addition. Usually always has something interesting or, you know, kind of just strange to say. So, Luna, a pretty solid character and gonna find herself in a very solid B tier. Up next, we have Krom. Now, this is another guy like Cedric. I wish we would have gotten to see more of Krom. And honestly, I think the uh, Krom and Hermione pairing should have lasted forever. They should have ended up together. Um, I think it would have been a better pairing than Ron and Hermione personally, but Krom, honestly, such a cool character. We don't even know a ton about him, and he's still one of the best. So Krom, gonna find himself up in the A tier. Would be S tier, but we just don't see enough of him. Up next, we have Myrtle. Um, honestly, of course, she is one of the, uh, I guess, ghosts or undead people living in Hogwarts. And honestly, I think she's super funny. Um, pretty much any scene she's in, she's always doing something really goofy or really weird. You don't see a whole lot of her, but honestly, Myrtle, a pretty solid side character. Always enjoyable to have her in one of the scenes, so gonna find herself up in the beach here as well. Up next, we have Albus Dumbledore. Uh, honestly, and I think many people will agree, one of, if not the best character in the Harry Potter franchise. I mean, he's just such a cool character, and every time you learn something more about him, it's just like, wow, this guy is super cool, and honestly, I have a feeling that there's so much more that we just don't even know about him from the movies. I'm sure you learn more in the books, but even beyond that, he's such a, you know, deep character, and just adds so much value to all the movies. He's just an absolute Chad. Albus Dumbledore, definitely gonna find himself up in the S tier, not even close. Up next, we have Rubius Hagrid. You know, what is it with old men and big beards that just makes them great in the Harry Potter movies? Um, honestly, Hagrid is just another fantastic character. He's this huge guy. I don't know how tall he is in, you know, the canon, but it looks like he's like 10, 12 feet tall and 600 pounds. Uh, but honestly, Hagrid is just such a likable character, and he's a bit of a softy on the inside as well, which I can respect. I just feel like every time Hagrid is, you know, in, the, in one of the scenes, anytime he's showing up, he's always adding good value to the movies, so Hagrid gonna find himself also up in the S tier. Up next we have Professor Quirrell um, from, I believe, the first movie, and honestly, uh, pretty, pretty creepy. I mean, there's something, of course, we know about Harry Potter and the Defense Against the Dark Arts teacher always being a bad guy, but um, Quirrell, I would say, was not super interesting. Um, of course, he's only there for the first movie, and, you know, Voldemort's living on the back of his head. I don't really know how anyone would ever get away with that, but apparently he was able to do it. Um, but as a character, I would say he's kind of interesting. Um, but I feel like he's, you know, not that impressive of a villain, honestly. And Professor Quirrell, only gonna find himself in the C tier. Up next, we have Professor Lupin, who honestly, I think he's a great character. Um, of course, he's not there in all the movies, but I think pretty much every single one that he's in, he plays a reasonable, significant role, and I feel like he just adds a lot of value. He's a super interesting character, and I really enjoy, you know, the conversations one-on-one -on -one that he has with Harry Potter. I think, you know, you really see a lot more into, uh, you know, Professor Lupin's life, and as well as, you know, Harry Potter's life and what he's going through, so I just feel like he's a character who really adds a lot of value anytime he's there, so he's gonna find himself up in a very solid A tier. Up next, we have Professor McGonagall, um, of course, a mainstay through all the movies, and I would say she's not the most important uh, professor at Hogwarts, but I will say she's just consistently good and consistently likable. Um, honestly, I, I really have nothing bad to say about Professor McGonagall at all. I think she's just a really solid character every, in every single movie she's in, so she's going to find herself up in the A tier as well. Up next, we have Severus Snape. Uh, honestly, you know, I think he's a fantastic character, and his character development, as it pertains to their perspective from the fans, I think is really good, because at the beginning, as a fan, you're like, oh, I can't stand Snape, he's a bad guy. 
he's got to be taken down. And then as the movies go on, you're kind of like, okay, well maybe, you know, I don't like him, but he's, you know, he's he's got some redeeming qualities. You know, he, he clearly cares about Hogwarts. And then towards the end of the, the franchise, you're like, man, Snape is like one of the best characters. Like, I can't believe I ever disliked him. So I think, you know, even though he's really doing the same thing throughout all the movies, I think the way that you view Snape it's just, it's really cool to see that change throughout the movies, and I think it's a really difficult thing for a character to really kind of be working towards the same objective throughout other movies, but have the uh, the view of the fans change so much. So I think Snape is a really fantastic character, adds a ton of value to the movies, super important, definitely going to find himself up in the S tier as well. Up next we have Alistar Moody. Um, honestly, this guy, he is as goofy as his name is, and honestly, uh, I think he's just a really great character, super funny, really goofy. Uh, I love his eyeball, honestly, and uh, with an eyeball like that, how can you put him anywhere but the A tier? Alistar, definitely going to find himself up there. Up next we have uh, Professor Filch. Uh, this guy is just so, so weird. I feel like he's not really that important. Um, come to think of it, I'm not even sure if he's a professor. He might just be kind of like the librarian slash hall monitor kind of person. I don't know if he actually teaches anything. You can correct me if I'm wrong on that. Uh, but he is super weird. He has like a little bit too close of a relationship with his cat, which is a bit concerning, honestly. Um, but I will say he doesn't add a whole lot of value to any of the movies he's in. He's just kind of there to be goofy and creepy and roaming the hallways. So Filch, honestly, unfortunately going to find himself down in the D tier. Up next we have Professor Trelawney, I think that's how you say it if I remember right, and she's like the, the divination teacher, um, kind of like the, uh, the pseudo magic teacher, as I think some people view her as, and I think she's kind of goofy, but I don't really feel like she adds a whole lot of value, I feel like she's usually just there to be kind of a, a, a plot twist or a plot tool used by, uh, by you know, Harry Potter in some parts, um, so... You know, she's okay, but I don't think she adds a ton of value, so she'll also find herself down in the D tier. Up next, we have a Professor Slughorn, who, you know, I won't say he's the best character, but the first thing we see about him, at least I'm pretty sure, is him literally disguising himself as a sofa chair, which I think is fantastic. I never would have thought to do that myself, but if I were a wizard in the Harry Potter universe, Turning myself into a chair would easily be one of the first things I would do, so I got a lot of respect for Professor Slughorn for that. And with that in mind, I gotta put him in the A tier. I mean, what, what else can I say? Turn himself into a chair, really nothing else bad to say about him. Up next, we have Dolores Umbridge, who I would say is probably the most universally hated character in the Harry Potter universe, but I gotta give mad props to the actress who played Umbridge. I think she did such a fantastic job of playing the character and playing the role, I mean, you can really see the actress really get into the role of Dolores Umbridge, and she's just the most unlikable professor you could possibly think of. And because of that, I'm gonna put her in the S tier. So Dolores, S tier for sure. Up next, we have Sirius Black, who honestly is just another incredible character. I mean, every single time you learn something new about Sirius, he just gets cooler and cooler and cooler. He's a great guy, great to Harry Potter, and honestly, He's pretty cool, you know? Sirius Black, he's got a cool name, cool character, adds a lot of value, I would say. Also gonna find himself up in the S tier. Up next, we have Dobby. Um, honestly, you know, he, he plays some significant roles in certain scenes and certain movies, but I would say he's relatively inconsequential and whatever he does could usually be done by something else. But um, as a character, I think he's pretty annoying. Um, I feel like they're aiming for Dobby to be a bit of comedic relief, but most of the time for me, he's just kind of an annoyance. So Dobby gonna find himself in kind of a mediocre seed tier. I don't hate him. He's got some value to the sh to the uh, movies, but overall, not a huge fan. Up next, we have Cornelius Fudge, who is the uh, you know the head of the Ministry of Magic. And honestly, this guy, I don't know what it is. I feel like the head of the Ministry of Magic would be a smart person, but. In the Harry Potter franchise, they make him out to be like one of the dumbest, most naive, ignorant people. Which I just don't feel like is that realistic, and it's kind of frustrating and annoying for somebody who has that much power to really be, you know, that ignorant, naive. And sure, you could say, you know, with the, the cover-up of Voldemort coming back, you know, he was trying to prevent people from, you know, falling into chaos and disarray. But overall, I feel like it was a pretty obviously stupid move to do a lot of the things he did in the movies and the books, so... 
Uh, Cornelius Fudge, honestly, gonna find himself down in the D tier. He's a somewhat important character, but I will say he was written fairly poorly. Up next, we have Lucius Malfoy, uh, of course, Draco Malfoy's father. And I would say he's kind of a mysterious figure throughout several of the movies. You know, you, you know he's a bad guy, but you're not really sure, um, you know, how deep his allegiance goes with Voldemort. Um, and I would say he's a relatively interesting character, not super important in the grand scheme of things. It's more so um, Draco, who I feel plays a more important role in his family. But overall, I would say he's a decent villain, a decent character, adds some value, so he'll find himself in the B tier. Up next, we have Bellatrix. Um, honestly, I think she's a fantastic villain. I think the actress does a really good job of playing her role as the character. I think you really believe that she's like a genuine psychopath, serial killer wizard, or witch, or suppose. Um, but honestly, Bellatrix, you know, you really hate her in the movies and the books, but I think her character is really well done, and she does add a lot of value to the villain side. So Bellatrix, I gotta put her up in the S tier as well. Up next, we have Peter Pettigrew. Um, honestly... You know, an annoying, mousy, ratty character. You know, he's he does play some important roles in certain movies and certain scenes, but I will say, uh, as a character outside of the you know influential decisions he makes, uh, he really doesn't add a whole lot of value to the movies. So, Peter he's gonna find himself down in the seat here. Last but not least, we have Voldemort. Um, of course, he's the main villain throughout the entire franchise. And, you know, there are some, you know, books, movies, franchises where I look at the villain and I'm like, really, what are you trying to do? Like, your agenda, your agenda doesn't really make sense. But I wouldn't really say that about Voldemort. I kind of understand what his agenda is and, well, it's certainly he's kind of a villain for villain's sake. I do think that his goals and objectives make a bit more sense than some other villains, which I have more of a problem with. So, I will say he fits the villain role pretty well, and just as a character, I think he's really interesting and pretty cool. Just learning more and more about his background and kind of how he became Voldemort throughout the uh, the franchise is, is pretty interesting. So, for that reason, he'll find himself up in the H tier. Well, that's my list. Let me know your guys' thoughts, and I hope you enjoy.